Hello and welcome to Gina Pro. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create roads with Gina Pro. Okay, so here's a little environment that I've already put some villages down with Gina Pro. It's a little Gaia environment. And I'm gonna right click on my hierarchy and go Gina, add road spline. And then a road spline is just a standard old Gina spline, although it has some specialized behavior to make it work better as a road. So I'm just control clicking on my terrain here to place our road in here. And then I can get in and I can select the node and move it around if I want. You can change the, the uh, angle of the road. All right, so let's now work out how we're going to connect this road to here. So what I'm gonna do is I think I might take my road up through the mountains here, over there and through there. So I'll just control click to keep on adding spline nodes. And why not, let's take it up through the side of this hill here. Cruise along here. And then quickly go up and through this mountain pass. Now, while Gina Pro does a fairly good job with most spline nodes, if the corners are a bit too sharp, then it can struggle a bit. So there's a couple of things you can do. If you wanted to add a little bit more definition to your spline and have it actually follow the terrain a bit better, you could subdivide it. Um, and then if you wanted to make it a little bit less complex, you could simplify it and you can then move things around. So now let's, uh, let's, let's look at this spline here. Let's click on carve so that we can carve the environment to suit our road. So down here, we're carving through this little bit of mountain. If we increase the width a bit, it'll be a less solid, uh, a less complex carve. Uh, we can maybe maybe decrease the width a bit and maybe increase the smoothness so it's more gentle around the carve. And then if we go over through our mountain pass here, we can actually tell Gina to either raise or lower along this spline. So we can basically control the degree to which we're carving through this mountain. Okay, this is a quite steep just here. So I might just knock this down a bit. Maybe knock this one down as, as well. In fact, I might even get rid of this node completely. Just hit the delete key select that one and select that one and we've joined them again. I think this is still a bit high, so let's just prop that down. Maybe uh, move it out a bit, whoops. Pull it out to the edge a bit more. So you can see you've got quite a bit of control over how Gina does its splines. Now, that's all well and good, but um, roads are very, very rarely just one straight thing. So Gina has the ability to do quite complex intersections, and it's all done procedurally. So you select, your, select the, the node you want to do an intersection from, and then just control click, and keep adding as per usual. And let's even become more complex on this intersection. Select that intersection again and control click and away we go. And <clears throat> sometimes, and it depends on the intersection, if they're a bit sharp, then Gina might have a struggle with it. So what you can do is you can actually select the spline. So there's the main spline links and here are the tangents for that and the thing. So you can actually just modify it a little bit. You can also, if you want, smooth the spline and that can also improve it as well. And then finally, you can join these nodes up again together. So I'll click on that, or con then control click, and boom, we've joined this up into a nice track. All right, so 
let's say that we're happy with that. Let's click on carve. Oh, you can also go and add your noise as well if you wanted to make it a bit more of an interesting effect at the edges. You know, I've never been a big uh, fan of really strong carves, but um, maybe a little bit of information at the edge of the of the road can look interesting. So just drop that down a little bit more, hit carve. So what Gino's done is it's now carved this road into our terrain. It's all GPU compute based, so it's very fast. And then we look at this intersection we go oh that's not looking so great so what we'll do is we'll modify this intersection so because gina is dynamically building this road spine for us it's just basically adapted itself and yeah, just drop it back a bit there you go we can uh, hit carve again if we want to and then boom we fixed up the terrain um so now that we've created some roads and they're pretty cool Let's add a little bit more interesting, a little bit more interest to our roads. So I'm going to click on my road spline again. Um, oh, actually, something else that the um, the road can do is you can. I've already talked about carving. If you've got grass and trees, you can hit these these buttons and it'll clear the grass and trees where they grow through the road from your terrain. And um, then there's some more settings with the road itself. So you can get in and tweak how the road works. You can conform it to the ground. So if you really want something to stick closely to the ground, it'll do that. Um, and then you can also, if you want to create a little bridge, you can use this uh, snap distance thing here. So let's go and create, maybe go into my terrain here and I'll reduce the height, raise a lower terrain and just drop that opacity way down. Now, if I hit the shift click, I'm actually lowering the terrain underneath the road. And notice that Gina actually is sticking to and keeping its, its road here. Now, what's actually happening is if we went into Gina and select conform to ground, it would actually just stick itself to the ground. But we, um, we turn that off and boom. So it's got a little um, ground snap thing. So you can actually change this snapping distance and um, Gina is, is, it will basically conform up to a point. Quite a handy little feature. Now let's add some additional interest to this road. So if I go into Gina, uh, let's have a look at our prefabs. So we've provided some nice little um, prefabs for you to go along with our roads. So let's have a look at our little road sign here. Pop a road sign down. And, um, you know, provided a whole bunch of them. Um, and somewhere here we've got some spawners. So what I want to do now is add some additional interest to my road. So I'm going to click on my road and let's drop a street lamp spawner into our extensions for this spline. Boom. And then if we go and look, you can see where these green dots are. This is based on our flow rate. So every 30 meters, what we're going to do is spawn another Gina spawner. Call spawn on a Gina spawner. In this case, it's a street lamp spawner. So if I go spawn, boom, we put up a whole bunch of street lamps into our road, but they're not that useful just yet. So let's change the offset to say four meters. So now they're off to the side. Let's align them to the spline and then now change their rotation. And now you've got a whole bunch of lights that are perfectly adapted to your road. Let's try adding some road barriers. So again, I'll go road barrier, drop them into our extensions and let's see. Here we've got the road barriers here. This, they'll spawn every 4.2 meters. Let's go spawn. Boom. And here we have a bunch of road barriers, but they're not very useful like this. So let's put them on the same side, maybe 3.7 meters out from our spline. Whoops, that's our rotation. Let's put them 3.7 meters out from our spline. Cool. So now we've got our um, things here and then let's align them to our spline and then set our rotation so they're perfectly 
aligned with the spline. So let's go about minus 90, I reckon. There you go. And now we've added a bunch of road barriers to our spline as well. Now they sometimes will go across the road as well, depends on how your spawn is working. So in that case, just delete them. All right, so we've got some road barriers. Uh, actually, the other thing I might do with these is I'll just make sure they're also uh, conforming to slope and snapping to ground. So they'll work better with the terrain around them. All right, now let's finish this off. Let's finalize this rather cool little environment by adding Guy Pro back into the scene. All right, so now I'm gonna finish off this environment. I'm gonna go back to Gaia and select my Alpine Meadow Biome, which is what I started with. I'm just gonna turn off our Mushroom Spawner because it works beautifully with standard Gaia environments, but it tends to swamp your roads with ferns. And then I'm just gonna hit Spawn Biome. Sweet. So in a matter of minutes, we've turned our environment into quite an interesting environment. When you work with Gaia Pro, we've already adapted Gaia Pro so that it pays attention to your existing environment. And I guess the last thing I'll do is I'll just hit play and show you our cool new environment. Make it full screen. So let's go and have a look at our environment. So we've got a rather excellent road here with our street lights and our barriers along the edge. And it's damn cool. But you want to see something really cool? Let's change the time of day. So I'm going to go to Gaia's runtime and change our lighting to around 5 a.m. in the morning. And boom, we've got lighting along our roads that we've just created. In fact, this lighting system is reasonably clever. It'll cull the lighting so that um, it doesn't, um, so that it manages your performance. you'll notice them lighting up. You can change all of those settings. But I absolutely love this feature. All right, thanks for watching.